Hey guys, welcome to the last tutorial video. We're working on the chamber excerpt for cello and bass. It's the same part, so it'll be one video. Um, I'm really going to preface this one by saying I'm not that good at these excerpts. Um, it's My brain doesn't really function playing viola and reading bass clef music, so I apologize for probably what's going to happen to a ton of mistakes. Um, but kind of what I'm doing with the other videos in this one, I probably won't do a run through, but I'm trying to give you guys some practice techniques and just kind of some rhythm and intonation stuff that um, I'm trying to help prevent doing some troubleshooting. So uh, this one here is broken up into two different excerpts. Um, so the first thing you play the first excerpt, you can take a break and then you can play the second one. You don't need to play them um, continuously if that's something, you, um, if you're worried about that. So. Uh, the first part has these a lot of eighth notes. Um, when you're playing this, trying to go for kind of not a really heavy sound, not a little lighter, so the bow stroke should be. pretty much those 16th notes, like at measure, the end of me measure 28, I'm in the string. And then immediately I'm a little lighter there, so. In the string, light. In the string. Last measure right there, measure 31. There's a lot of string crossing. Just remember that your fingers are hopping for the cello. They're hopping at whatever you're doing for if you're playing a fourth finger at that D. The next is gonna be a G4. And use those open strings to help you out. Open, open. Back to fourth finger again for this. Um, for the G, but then you have to play a C natural. It's gonna be, there's a lot of different kind of finger patterns where these have to be able to string across. So the more you can not hop per se, but kind of plant them in the center, that'll help you out. Um, the first one here, it's a lot of string crossing. So I'm looking and watching for a facility in your right hand. Um, are you able to have the right amount of arc with your bow hand? Um, and your bow angle so that way you're producing a good sound without getting a scratchy sound okay so that's kind of what the, one of the things i'm looking for for that first excerpt that's why i included all these string crossings um just be mindful of your shifts like for, ever, uh, for both celli and bassy measure 29 you got to get to that e somehow um so figure out a good finger for that and i know bass you have a little bit more shifting to do because of how the instrument works so just kind of f finding good fingers using the open strings to help facilitate your shifting. Um, the second excerpt, I'm working a lot on making sure your right and left hand coordination is going for these faster runs. So we're gonna start right at measure 38. So that one right there, that's pretty much scale work. So it's a lot of scales. It's pretty easy finger patterns. Um, if you're having trouble with that, um, for this one and the second harder passage, uh, I recommend really breaking these up into rhythms. There are, there are two rhythms I would focus on, is the long, short, long, short, and then the reverse, short, long, short, long. And I'll kind of play, I'll play measure 38 using these rhythm patterns. So the first one, long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. <laughs> Once again, here's a long, short, long, short. Notice I'm in for the viola uh, and violin. We kind of play 16th notes here in the upper half. For you guys, you're gonna be playing it more at the balance point. That's where you're gonna get the best sound. So even though I'm recording and it looks like I'm here in the bow, you really, you guys need to be kind of here. That's how you get the best sound from your 16th notes. And here's the opposite pattern. It's short, long, short, long. 
So if you can practice this out of, out of rhythm as written and you do these kind of rhythms, that's really gonna be a good practice tool for you guys to get that. When you can play both those, then you play it together. I said together, oops. I said together, but I really meant um, as written. So you play long, short, long, short. <laughs> Opposite, short, long, short, long. And then when you can do both those very comfortably, then you should be able to play it as written. Last thing I'm going to say is I didn't do a good job of it, but you want to start to introduce the phrasing for this. So when the line goes higher, you kind of increase the sound. When the line goes lower, you kind of decrease the sound. It should be a nice kind of ebb and flow kind of thing. So I'll try to incorporate the phrasing this time. <laughs> And when you get to these quarter notes, make sure there's a space, rest, rest, and then the same thing we did at the beginning, lighter. Now starting at the measure 42, you have harder runs. So once again, I really recommend doing Long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. Here's the other rhythm. One of the things I'm listening for is, are you getting that good F sharp? So on the C string, remember you're in the key of G major, so there's only one sharp F sharp. Can you switch between those finger patterns? When you're on the G string, fourth finger C natural, but then when you go to the C string, you're using your extension or, or a different finger pattern, however you want to get that done, the patches done, but just be mindful of the F sharps. So hopefully when you get these rhythms done, you kind of put it together. And when you get to 44, you're playing 24, 25 of the same note, this D, first finger, Make sure it's really in tune. There should be a sympathetic vibration, which means if you're playing this note um, for cello only, um, playing this note in tune, your D string should be uh, vibrating. So you, should, you can actually physically look. if your D string is vibrating. That will be a good indicator of if your note's in tune. That's one of those notes that I'm going to be really listening for. Um, that last part here, the arpeggios. I would take them out. Like right now, I need to practice this. So I'm doing the first one as is. I didn't get a good F sharp. I'm going to reset and try it again. All right, that one's pretty good. Do the next one. All right. Then eventually when you feel confident about that and you put it all together, then the next one I would do would be do the first six. Then I do the back six. Then eventually I would put it together. Rest. Rest. You don't need to do the repeat. You can just stop the first time. No need to do the repeat there. Um, this one's a little shorter than the other ones. So the biggest thing is for this excerpt, when I'm hearing the second part, are your 16th notes really clear? Are they, do, are they, do they sound muddled? If they're sounding muddled, then you need to think about your bow placement. So where are you playing? Are you playing over the fingerboard? Are you playing in the middle at the bridge? Also think about your bow angle as well. Are you drawing all, are you drawing parallel to the bridge and the fingerboard, thinking about your lanes as well, thinking about where it is. So I know when I'm looking at class, a lot of us, our tendency is to play here a lot. So you need to make sure you're playing these at least in the, in between the bridge and the fingerboard. Um, other things that could be happening is 
increasing your and decreasing your bow speed. So making sure you're using your bow speed accurately. So that way for these 16th notes, using a, a fast bow so they come out. You shouldn't be using tiny bow to go. That sounds very sticky and it doesn't sound clean because I'm using this much bow and I'm bare, and I'm not using a bigger bow speed. As much as you can on these longer notes, these quarter notes and the dotted quarter uh, and then like the dotted half note at the end, make them ring. If you hear that, even though uh, there's a rest, I release the bow and there's still some resonance from my instrument. And that's something I'm gonna be listening for as well. Can you release correctly? Um, as always, if you're having issues with any of this, any of these excerpts, you're more than welcome to send a video and then I'd be more than happy to uh, look over from give you some, see what I'm seeing and he, you know, and all that stuff. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, once again, apologies for not really getting this 100%. This is for my, like I said, my brain just doesn't work. I can't play viola and read bass clef stuff. I, yeah, so apologies for that, but thank you guys and I'll see you soon.